All right, so today, um, or this video, not today, I guess, because I make a lot of videos in a single day. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the differences in the clutch systems, so the drive systems for the mowers, attachments, things like that. <clears throat> On the older 300, 400 series, which would be this one right here, it's a dry clutch system versus uh, the wet clutch system that is in the K91, K92, and the and the 4-5 series, so 425, 445, 455, and then the X series. Um, so the original X4-5, X5-5, and then the X7s that are out now. Uh, but I figured that would be a little helpful because that's one of the major design changes uh, when they went away in 1993 uh, when uh, they came out with the K91 and the, and the 425, 445, 455. Uh, did away with the dry clutch system, went to the wet clutch system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these clutch systems, uh, probably in this video, just explain basic uh, kind of principles. And in the next video, I will go ahead and take each one of them apart and uh, go from there. So the dry clutch system, the deer really use the electromagnetic clutch. That's, a, that's an important uh, aspect there. It's an electromagnetic clutch. Uh, deer used it off and on starting in the 70s um, and really uh, with the, with the 300 um, and the 140, it became uh, much more uh, common. Uh, the 140 always had a, an electromagnetic clutch. How it works is there's a field coil, which is down here on the bottom, that is mounted to the, the engine. And then there's a, uh, basically that, that is a magnet that once you flip the PTO switch, power goes to the magnet, pulls the, pulls the, the clutch basically to it, engaging this part right here. Uh, so this is all independent. There's a bearing in here. Uh, it is basically a dry clutch system, just like it sounds. There's no fluid or anything else. It just relies simply on uh, magnetics to keep it together uh, and power um, the pulley right here. So this is the drive pulley. This would be the pulley for the deck, the snowblower, etc. Uh, if it is on the 420, 430, then it would be, uh, um, you know, it would go to a shaft. Uh, system. Meanwhile, the electro or the the wet clutch system. What happens when you engage the wet clutch clutch system is uh, there's a solenoid on top of, or on the back of the K91, K92 that sends fluid. Um, that solenoid modulates fluid, sends fluid, causes um, the the clutch plates in here to compress, much like I would say you know a tractor, car, things like that that have wet clutch plates causes those, those to compress. Um, there's a power shaft right here that's input. Um, when these clutches, when these, when this system is not depressed, this clutch is spinning in here free, much like that. So it's just sitting here spinning. There's a shaft that comes in here that's running off of the engine. Once these plates right here, and I can't do it with my fingers, but once they're pressed in, those plates will push up against each other just like a regular clutch. Uh, and they're wet this, in this particular case, so fluids immersing them, fluids running over them. Uh, and then this whole system right here engages. Um, this is the, this right here the, is the, the gear that will basically go through the back of the, the K91, K92 transaxle. Um, and that's what powers all the way down to uh, the mid PTO shaft or the rear PTO shaft if you have a rear PTO. Um, there's some gears in there if you have a rear PTO. That are a little bit different, but that's what the difference between these two systems. Um, you know, each one has their perks. Uh, this is obviously a lot easier to work on because it's in front of the engine. Um, you know, you can take it on, uh, take it off, or put it on, take it off. You can change out bearings, things like that. Meanwhile, this system is much harder to get to. And here, in just a second, I'll, I'll walk you over to a K91 transaxle. Uh, and we'll look at that for just a minute. We'll kind of explore some of that. Uh, I do have that. Uh, I did take apart a K91 transaxle a couple months ago, several months ago, I guess now. Uh, so I'll try to put a link to that series in the description. Um, but I'll show you where this is at. So it's much harder. The, the wet clutch system, the cl this clutch pack is much harder to get to. Um, you know, expense wise, they're about the same cost, uh, new or used. Um, you know, this part right here. Uh, this is actually pretty much, it was on a machine, but it was not on a machine very long. Um, you know, so this one right here is pretty much a brand new 
uh, clutch. In fact, this is the spare clutch that I keep around for any 300 or 400 series that I have that might need a new clutch. Meanwhile, this one's got number of hours on it. I can't remember how many hours it came, the machine it came out of had on it, but it's got a number of hours. This, uh, one thing I did forget to say is this right here is the clutch brake. Um, there's a spring that basically uh, pushes on this once you've turned the PTO off that stops um, stops this, this whole mechanism. But if not, it would just spin freely because you've released pressure on the plates right here. Um, one thing I would note that if you're powering a 60 inch deck, the brake is going to wear out long before um, if you're powering say a 48 or a uh, 54 inch deck just because there's more mass there. Or if you're only doing snow blowing, there's, there's no really mass on a snow blower so it's going to stop pretty quick so there's even less wear. So this wear right here is never much of a concern um, but it does wear uh, to some degree. So um, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you where each one is, is at uh, on a machine. Uh, this will be on the front of a 300 or 400 series, which I've shown you in a recent 420-318 video. And this is in a K91 transaxle, and uh, I'll shut off the camera and we'll walk over to the transaxle and kind of go from there. So this is our K91 transaxle. Um, this would be in the, and this is what powers a 425, 445, 455 type machine. The K92 is a little bit different, but not much. Just some, some structural changes in axles, things like that, gearing differences. Uh, so you have the input shaft right here. Um, that input shaft drives the charge pump, etc. At the same time, it's gonna wind its way kind of way through the, the machine. Um, and then back here in the back, let me walk around it here. The clutch pack is going to be right there in the back, and the clutch pack, um, the brake is right in here. So this little cover right here is where the brake is at. Um, so the clutch pack is going to be kind of in this little bump right here. Uh, there's a solenoid, and what's going to happen is that clutch pack, the, the plates are oriented forward. Um, so that main drive shaft up there is going to come straight back, go into the clutch pack, um, and then uh, what's going to happen is uh, this this solenoid right here is going to open up, and uh, once you've turned the once you've turned the PTO on, um, it's going to open up and let fluid in there, push the clutch plates together. That clutch is going to come on, and then it's going to go all the way through down to the the bottom gear. And that bottom gear, there's a shaft that's going to uh, basically turn the mid PTO shaft right there. So that's kind of how. Um, that wet clutch system works. Obviously, like I said, it's much harder to get to um, uh, compared to a dry clutch system that would be on a 318, uh, 420, 430, etc. I will note that the 430 is actually, the PTO on the 430 is extremely difficult to get to because it is behind, um, it is behind the radiator on the 430. So, uh, hopefully that's uh, a good explanation for the differences between the two systems and uh, the next video we're actually going to take those two clutches apart and uh, explore kind of some of the differences and show you how they work. So thanks for watching.